So far, we've talked about stochastic maps and how to compose them and how to view ordinary functions as specific examples of stochastic maps. What we'll do now is describe how to take the product of two stochastic maps in a way that generalizes the usual notion of the Cartesian product of two functions. So given stochastic maps f and g, we can form their product And it's another stochastic map that essentially takes the product of these two of the associated probabilities pointwise. So it's determined by the formula f cross g. Now remember what the, our notation is for each element in the domain. We get a probability distribution on the codomain, and that probability distribution is determined by what it does to points because we're working with finite sets. So that probability distribution is determined by the value of our initial input with our, our, our output. And it's just the product of the associated probabilities from f and g. And let's just check that, make sure that this coincides with our usual definition of Cartesian product when we specify that these stochastic maps correspond to functions. So if f and g are functions, or how I think of them as being deterministic, then this product is given by, well, we know what happens when these are functions. Then we use the, uh, the Kronecker delta. And this is x prime f of x, while this is delta y prime g of y. And this is nothing but, it's the same exact thing as requiring that x prime coincides with f of x simultaneously as g as y prime coincides with, coincides with g of y. And this is the usual way we think about the Cartesian product because it says, what is the value of f cross g at x, y? Well, it's f of x comma g of y. And this is exactly what um, encompasses that idea. And all of the structure that we've defined so far, um, the idea of the stochastic map, its definition, how it composes, the fact that functions are special cases, in particular the identity function is a special kind of stochastic map. It turns out that composition is associative. The identity is an identity for the composition for any finite set. And this Cartesian product um, it also satisfies a type of associativity condition. And together all of this, all of these data um, give the collection of finite sets with stochastic maps and this associated product, this, it gives it the structure of a symmetric monoidal category. But there's another thing that we haven't yet discussed, which is a notion of almost everywhere equivalence. Or in other words, an almost surely notion of equivalence. And this essentially takes care of when probabilities happen to vanish. And when such a thing happens, we can have a notion of equivalence between functions um, when their probabilities are equal versus when they're not, when they're zero. And so we get a very natural definition of what it means for two stochastic maps, very similar to the way we define um, almost everywhere equivalence for functions. So given two stochastic maps, So I'm using different notation than what's up here. So given two stochastic maps and a probability measure on x,
we say that f is p almost everywhere equivalent to g if and only if. And the way we define equivalence is that these stochastic maps agree everywhere outside a set of measure zero, so outside of events that have probability zero. So the way we write that is if and only if the probability of the set of points on the domains of these corresponding stochastic maps where these two stochastic maps differ is equal to zero. Now, what does this inequality mean? Now, f of x and g of x are both probability measures on y. So when I write that they're not equal, that means f subscript yx is not, is, is not equal to g subscript yx for some y. So this is a very intuitive notion of almost everywhere equivalence. There's another sort of diagrammatic way that you can encompass these definitions as well. So I'll write this as a theorem, but we'll use this idea uh, later on. So it turns out that given f, g, and p as in this definition, f is almost everywhere equivalent to g, so this is the notation that we'll use, if and only if the diagram, now this is going to be a little bit of a, an interesting diagram, so we're going to produce our probability on x. We're going to duplicate x using the map that we introduced earlier. And on each of these two factors, we will apply our associated maps f and g on their corresponding terms. So in this case, we'll have the identity on x here cross f, and here it's the identity on x cross g, where this product is the one that we just defined. So if and only if this diagram commutes. So first of all, this is a very interesting statement. It tells us that this notion of almost everywhere equivalence can be encompassed in some diagrammatic form. And secondly, if we ever discuss these in these videos, we'll find out that this is very closely related to a uh, notion of almost everywhere equivalence in a non-commutative setting where we replace our finite sets and stochastic maps with certain kinds of C star algebras and completely positive unital maps. And these sorts of objects are relevant in quantum information theory. Okay, so before we prove this, We'll have a little bit of a lemma just to make the calculation a little bit easier. And that lemma is the composition of two maps, of two stochastic maps that are of this form. So if I have a map phi from u into v and a map psi from u into v, and I precompose with this diagonal map, then this composition is given by the formula. So we take phi cross psi, compose with this diagonal. And how do we evaluate this? Well, the domain has a u, and the codomain has a v and a w. So we can evaluate it v comma w and u. And the claim is that this is given by taking just the product of these, where two of the points happen to match up. So this is phi v u psi w u for all um, v u and w. So the proof of this is pretty, pretty easy once we have all of our definitions in place. And the left-hand side of this expression, by definition of the composition and by using the definition of the product, is equal to a sum. And what's our intermediary uh, step? It's the sum over u cross u. 
And u cross u, therefore, we have to sum over two elements. We've al we're already using the letter u, so we're going to have to introduce u prime and u double prime, for instance. So it's going to be u prime, u double prime, both elements in u. And the product here is going to be phi v u prime psi w u double prime, because that's the second coordinate. And this is, as we recall, the Dirac, the Kronecker delta twice using the coordinate u and u double prime and u prime. So it's u prime u delta u double prime u. So this gives us two delta functions, and we have a summation over those. And as a result, these two letters coincide. So this is exactly the right-hand side. Quick and simple proof. So this is the proof of the lemma. And then the proof of the theorem is very similar. Now, we already know what these kinds of com compositions look like by this lemma. We know what this composition is, and therefore all we have to do is multiply by, when we're done, pu. And this lemma shows us that we can actually compute this. We already know what this, each of these parts look like by specifying these corresponding function, uh, stochastic maps. And then we um, do the final summation over this time just a single variable, namely x. So in this case, the top part of this diagram, let's call this, I don't want to write all of the notation out. Let's just call this top side um, capital F, let's say. And this bottom one. Let's call that capital G. Then F evaluated at the endpoints, which are x, y, x, comma, y, and the starting point, which is just a single point, which is corresponding to the fact that we're talking about a probability distribution on x cross y. This equals, we sum over all the elements in the codomain of our probability P. So that's x. And based on this formula, we already know what this map is. This map is the identity evaluated at that x prime. So we're summing over x prime here. And then the right-hand coordinate is our function, is our stochastic map f. And that gives us f y x prime. And we multiply by our probability p x prime. Now we already have a delta function because of this identity map. So that summation drops, and we end up with f, y, x, p, x. And by going around the other way on the bottom, by a very similar calculation, we'll get that this equals g, y, x, p, x. And now let's compare these two sides. Now this is, by the way, true for all x, y. And when we compare these two sides, this exactly says that f, i.e., f, y, x equals g, y, x for all y and x such that p, x is not equal to 0. That's what this equation allows us to conclude. And this is exactly the same condition as this one. It says when p, x is non-zero, all of these numbers coincide for all values of y. And when p of x happens to be equal to 0, there's no statement whatsoever. But that doesn't matter, because our notion of almost everywhere equivalence exactly tells us that we only look at what happens when these probabilities are non-zero. So this gives us an interesting way to think about almost everywhere equivalence from a sort of diagrammatic perspective.